Second part. Introductory decree. Decrees. Recommendations to the Superior General. Intracuctati decree. We continue to come forth from his heart. From this heart came this work, and he gives it life and carries it forward. We began the general congregation 21 with the certainty that the Institute is coming forth from his heart. This has filled us with hope. From this open heart we receive the life we want to offer with humility, recognizing that from the smallest and most vulnerable we learn the daring, resistant, and martyrial hope. During the congregation, we welcomed the remains of Mother Pillar. Their presence in the Church of Martinez Campos becomes a sign of the reconciliation of the history of setbacks that the two sisters experienced. We contemplate in a spirit of gratitude to the story that God is weaving with and in us, listening closely and allowing selves to be challenged. We recognize that we move between fidelity and fragility, grace and inconsistencies. All this moves us to follow paths of conversion and transformation. We wish to remain in the love of his heart and in the love of the heart of every human being, to offer seeds of hope in every gesture, word, encounter, and to make it possible for the kingdom to come about, which is germinating in the small story. Coming forth for a culture of care in recent years, our vital context has been marked by the COVID-19 pandemic, which crossed all geographical and social borders, revealing the vulnerability and inequality of our societies. We saw a lot of plans undone. We became more aware of the essentials in our lives. We also suffer, like many others, the loss of sisters and relatives. We recognize the value of mutual care as a grace. We need to show each other appreciation and affection, which transcend the difficulties of coexistence. We have grown up in this culture of care, and we feel called to ensure the integral health of all them sisters and to accompany each other in our physical and mental frailties. The creativity of love was present in small and large initiatives. Empathetic listening and sensitive solidarity in the face of pain made many people certain that they were not alone on this journey. Social networks gave us the opportunity to offer spaces for prayer and worship, to share the table of the word and to be good Samaritans. We recognize the presence of some sisters in the field of health care, making our charism visible, together with so many people who sustain life in these times of pandemic. From what we have learned during this time, how do we continue to take steps toward this culture of care? We continue to come forth from his love. Consecrated for his people, we unfold our lives as a channel of his love among the most vulnerable. This look at the mission is what dissenters us from selves. We want to regain the audacity to waste time at the Lord's feet and to let selves be carried away by the unpredictable action of the Spirit. Embracing the price of this covenant with Him gives meaning and truth to our yes, I want it at all costs, which can weaken when we are distracted from the fundamental. This is how we perceive it in the management of our time in relationships that disorder and in the misuse of digital platforms, which falsely fill our loneliness. Even the use of the mobile, when this is not discerned, takes away our quality of presence in our prayer and adoration as well as in our relationships with the sisters and other people. In the light of this reality, we would have to ask selves, how do we connect with selves and with God, who dwells in us, if we are distracted in so many things? Personal and community discernment is vital to lucidly traverse our daily lives. It is necessary to practice authentic listening to others and to open selves to dialogue that can change us overcoming competition, self-centeredness and criticism, which sometimes drive our actions and prevent us from carrying out the mission in a collaborative and synodal way. Sometimes competition, self-centeredness and criticism drive our actions. This prevents us from carrying out the mission in a collaborative and synodal way. We also need to accept with faith what human mediation entails. Are we willing to work on the conversion of our individualism, self-promotion, 
and negativity, we continue to come forth from his surrendered life. The decree on the Eucharist has connected us vitally with the founding experience that the Eucharist is the life of the Institute as the root is of the tree. Six, we were born and continue to come forth from his surrendered life. Looking at the path traveled, we feel that everything we do for migrants, we do with them, with an accompaniment that generates confidence in those who have suffered violence. We are challenged to educate our gaze to recognize those people who are invisible, convinced that only by networking can we expand our capacity to respond. We welcome the hope that is born from feeling that we are fellow travelers sharing the same flesh and together we are building an ever greater we. We continue to come forth from the pedagogy of the heart. The pedagogy of the heart is our own style of education, which flows from reparation. The pandemic increased the digital and economic divide, and creative proposals emerged to respond to them. We have enthusiastically welcomed the Global Compact on Education proposed by the Pope, and we desire, together with other institutions, to choose the paths that contribute to justice, political commitment, and social transformation. We feel called to strengthen our accompaniment of families, welcoming the diversity of situations and putting the person at the center. We want to have the courage to invest the best energies, ten in education in service of the gospel. We continue to come forth in new generations of handmaids God continues to call young people who wish to take on our charismatic path. In the new generations of handmaids, the Institute is renewed to continue being a reparative presence in the historical moment and in the future ahead. Once initial formation has ended, it is a challenge to accompany the effective sexual life of the sisters who live silently the difficulties of integrating the solitude of the heart. In several circumscriptions, there remains the question of how to revitalize vocation youth ministry. It depends on the determination with which each community reflects the joy of a life given with faith, courage and perseverance whether we will glimpse something new in the future. How do we keep our passion alive that can generate life in the new generation? We continue to come forth, reimagining the future. We are a living apostolic body, continually seeking how to serve the mission more and better, immersed in a process of life, of diminishment, and of growth. New realities are born such as the region of Vietnam or the delegation of Timor, and paths for developing new provinces are being opened. The question of the future is urgent for some circumscriptions that are searching for new modes of configuration. It is a great challenge to welcome diminishment and, at the same time, to renew our spiritual and apostolic vitality. We also feel the pain of our diminishment in the difficulty of sustaining some significant presences in places that are part of our historical and spiritual heritage. At the same time, the Institute in its outreach continues to overcome internal and external borders, seeking horizons of mission in close proximity to the poorest. The challenge is to successfully articulate sustainable works with the poor and justice. 
We feel that with others, we can continue to respond to the cries for peace, inclusion, and dignity of the most impoverished, joining networks and collaborating in new forms of presence in inter-congregational and itinerant community. Strategic planning from this universal perspective is embodied in multicultural communities that raise questions about how we actually live interculturality. We are part of a church that is journeying and that wants to make synodality a way of life. We must continue to take steps in reciprocity with those with whom we share life and mission. We are called to give leadership roles and participation to the ACI family and to favor channels of mutual enrichment in the tourism and mission. We have entered into a process of ecological conversion, which connects us, through our tourism, with the cry of the wounded earth and of impoverished peoples. It is urgent for us to continue advancing in this commitment through a social economy in solidarity so that it becomes a way of life in greater solidarity with the life of the poor and of the earth. The digital world is a reality that runs through our life and mission. We feel challenged to continue forming selves so that our presence on social networks is a proclamation of the kingdom and a witness of hope. Are we willing to take a risk in order for newness to come forth? We continue to come forth in the hope that springs from his heart. We want to end by confessing our hope, a hope received, overflowing with the new life that springs from the heart of the risen Christ. We profess our daring hope, which makes us risk, open selves to the future, welcome diversity without fear, beyond our securities. The kind of hope we have experienced when we have come out of selves and have walked with others, sharing mission, building fraternity together. We confess our resistant hope, which makes us persevere in difficulty and endure pain, accept diminishment, learn from failure, and not allow selves to be overcome by frustration or apathy. Hope that we discover in the lowliest, in those who apparently have no reason to hope, but who show an unshakable trust in the God who sustains them. We confess our material hope, which makes us give everything, reserving nothing, loving to the extreme, which makes us break and share selves, giving our lives. Hope that we renew every day in the Eucharist and that we live when we are ready, out of love for him and for his people, to give selves limitlessly. Jesus Christ is our hope. From his heart we receive this active hope from which the mission and life of the Institute flow incessantly. We continue to walk with Mary. She, with the power of the Risen One, wants to give birth to a new world, where we are all brothers and sisters, where there is a place for every outcast in our societies, where justice and peace shine forth. Hopes, above all, let us nourish the one that we have placed in the Lord, and trust that his cause will triumph. Decrees. Mission. 1. Education in service of the Gospel. Educating is an act of hope. In the time and space in which they lived, St. Raphael and Mary, Mother Pillar, and the first handmaids found the way, through education, to respond to the needs of reality. Today, contemplating the reality of the world affected by a pandemic that has increased social inequality, exclusion, and the educational and digital divide, we want to continue recreating the educational vocation of our foundresses like them, we desire to respond to the hopes of humanity and to God's dream, convinced that education is a new creation. From our reparative mission, we have the responsibility to encourage formal and non-formal educational processes that propose a lifestyle that contributes to building universal fraternity and that rejects the throwaway culture and all forms of dehumanization. 
be actively involved in generating processes of transformation of social, economic, political, and cultural relations that lead us to a new way of dwelling in our common home. We feel urged from the heart of Jesus to take another step to update our educational responses with creative fidelity, preserving and caring for what is our own, and at the same time open and flexible to welcome the new. The Church invites us in the Global Pact on Education to join efforts worldwide to create an educational alliance and form people to rebuild the broken society. We are resolutely committed to this alliance in dialogue with the pedagogy of the heart. 1. Putting the person at the center from our contemplative gaze we recognize the value of each person, their dignity, their beauty, and at the same time their ability to relate to all of creation. 2. Accompanying people with tenderness and firmness, listening to the voice and heart of each child, adolescent and young person, to build together a future of justice and peace. 3. Encouraging the full participation of girls and young women in education, favoring universal communion, where each person is a gift for others, and promoting collaboration rather than competitiveness. 4. Accompanying the family as the first and indispensable educator, collaborating with them in the process of the integral growth of their children. 5. Educating the need for acceptance and, in particular, openness to the most vulnerable and marginal. 6. Educating people who are committed to social, economic, cultural and political transformation for the good of humanity. Forming the heart, sensitivity, and conscience to take care of our common home, adopting lifestyles that are more sober and respectful of the environment. In each context, lines of action will be established to develop and implement this dialogue between the Global Pact on Education and the Pedagogy of the Heart in all our works and missions. We want to live this commitment prioritizing. The education of excluded people including this option in our planning and offering a comprehensive, quality, solidarity-based and sustainable education. Networking, being interconnected among sisters and with others, creating spaces for mutual learning, to share experiences and materials, and to generate processes of reflection, commitment, and evaluation as we search together. Methodologies that respond to the current educational paradigm that put the person at the center, that develop attitudes and strategies of collaboration, and that enhance cooperative work. Educational programs to form the effective sexual dimension, respect for diversity, prevention of abuse, inclusion, interculturality, critical sense, ecological citizenship, and the transformative political dimension of reality. Our own formation, and that of the people with whom we share the mission in each context. Love will make you look, in every moment, for what best serves each person. 2. Synodality We want to deepen in and to further commit selves to the practice of synodality, which is a constitutive dimension of the Church 19 and an expression of the communion that springs from our Eucharistic life and reparative mission. 1. The path of synodality is the path that God expects from the Church of the Third Millennium. Point 20. This conviction, which is also Pope Francis' project, leads us to seek together how to respond to this ecclesial paradigm by taking a further step in order to give the Institute and the Church a renewed missionary impulse. In this process, we note the importance of living in continuous conversion in order to bring to life the main features of synodality, to walk in communion as a participatory and co-responsible people of God, with prophetic commitment, open to listening, in an attitude of discernment, cultivating a reparative dialogue. 2. We want to promote the full participation of those of us who make up the Church by virtue of baptism, particularly women, for historically we have been pushed aside. Raphaela Mary and Pillar knew how to act freely before the ecclesial authority of their time. Following their example, 
we want to forge our place in the church by collaborating in the prophetic service of the kingdom, deploying the potential of our charism and influencing the spaces and processes of decision making. We need to review our practices so as not to contribute to the discrimination of women or to reinforce clericalism. 3. Interculturality is an expression of the universality of the Institute and a prophetic witness of hope. We value the richness of the diversity of the different ethnic groups, peoples, cultures and languages that make up our world. Our charism impels us to promote unity where differences coexist, complementing one another. In a multicultural world, we are invited to live interculturality, which is building a new culture with the best of each one. As we contemplate the world in its diversity, from the pierced heart of Christ, we are impelled to examine honestly our way of being and being with others. We need to initiate a process of personal and community conversion that favors the development of a new lifestyle and a new way of relating that overcome unequal treatment and the dynamics of discrimination, exclusion and racism that exist in the world and in the Institute, causing great rupture. 4. We feel called to enter into a process of deepening our understanding of synodality in the light of our Eucharistic reparative charism. We desire to strengthen our experience of synodality in our Ignatian style of government, strengthening the practice of discernment and the channels of participation at all levels. We want to engage in a listening dynamic to hear what the Holy Spirit is stirring in us regarding how we live our relationships with each other and the dynamics they entail, how we exercise power and resolve conflicts, and how we live the authority-obedience relationship so that we can grow in communion and participation. Synodality will allow us to live reparative dialogue, which is always an encounter, a relationship that is called to generate or strengthen bonds, as well as identities, towards an ever greater we that encourages new narrative about reality. 5. We feel called to establish a dialogue, based on our charism, with the reality of human sexuality today, which will lead us to a path of conversion and a more inclusive pastoral commitment. That takes into account all persons who for various reasons are not fully recognized in the church or in society, new models of family life, LGBT community. That promotes sensitivity, acceptance and accompaniment of individuals and families, being an inclusive and restorative witness in the realities in which we find selves. Synodality must be lived in daily life, in the way of Jesus, who walks with his people. We want to be attentive to the different ways of sharing the mission in small matters as well as in larger ones. But even if we are small, very small, because yes, we are. Our aspirations, grounded in God, must be very great, not in noisy things, for the same reason that we are so small in the small virtues, they're in the small things, imitating Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Three, formation. Ongoing formation. Ongoing formation as a reflective attitude towards life in order to listen, deepen and learn, demands of us an attitude of conversion, a constant evaluation of our life in the light of faith and openness to the signs of the times in order to enter into God's plan in history. The sound of the invitation reverberates within us, calling us to continue on our journey carrying in our hearts the hopes of the world. Where of the efforts being made in ongoing formation in the different circumscriptions, we see the need to prioritize. Some topics that respond to the needs of the mission, 
and the new demands of reality. The Church expects us as consecrated women to be capable of creating author spaces where the gospel logic of gift, fraternity, acceptance, diversity and mutual love is lived. For this reason it is important to form selves in interculturality and in the recognition and acceptance of the multiple and complex reality of human sexuality today. It is time to become more aware of the place of women today in society and in the Church in order to incarnate the new ecclesiolatory, promoting their full participation and embracing a greater commitment rooted in our Charism. Pope Francis has said to consecrated men and women, I believe that your service, today more than ever, can be summed up in two words, discern and accompany. It remains necessary to form selves in personal and communal discernment in order to commit selves more deeply to the life and mission entrusted to us. We have a Creating Safer Environments document, which includes a protocol for abuse prevention. We need training to better understand the multiple factors at play in abusive dynamics. We need to delve more deeply into the social and solidarity economy to give a more committed response and to further understand the relationship between our Eucharistic reparative charism and the economy at all levels. We recognize the possibilities for mission that social media and social networks give us, and at the same time we acknowledge the strong influence and dependence they create. We need to learn to make responsible and apostolic use of them, and to form selves to have an evangelizing presence in the digital world or the sixth continent. The pandemic has highlighted the need for holistic health care. Knowing the factors that influence physical, psychological and social well-being will lead to more serenity and happiness among selves and in the mission. Lef is a gift and a blessing from God. Both health and illness are means we wish to use to serve the kingdom. The advanced directives and living wills documents help us to reflect on the final stage of our life and to make decisions about how we wish to live it. For government, regulations of the general congregation. Number 51.1 of the regulations of the general congregation is modified as follows. The process of election of assistants general and admonitor will begin in the general congregation in which a superior general is elected after the election of the latter and in the general congregation invoke in order to deal with matters of business after the commission on the state of the institute has been formed. Recommendations to the Superior General. Mission, Pedagogy of the Heart. One, that in the manner she considers most advisable. She promotes a process of going deeper and of updating in regard to the pedagogy of the heart, in which all those who share mission with us can participate, so that we become more aware of how it traverses our reparative mission that she considers the possibility of preparing some materials which gather together this shared reflection, experiences carried out, and more systematized studies. Unanima International. 2. That she reviews and evaluate the participation in and the commitment of the congregation to Unanima International, and that in the next intermediate meeting, Taking into account the opinion of the major superiors, she decides about the continuation of the commitment assumed. Government. Formation of local superiors. 3. That she promotes and carry out in the form that she considers advisable, international meetings of formation for sisters that have been appointed as local superiors for the first time. Regulations of the provincial congregation and the general congregation. 4. That she studies and modify in the manner that she considers advisable, 
The regulations of the provincial congregation and of the general congregation, including the following points. The revision of Numbers 16.5 and 17.3 of the regulations of the provincial congregation, and of Numbers 22 and 24.4 of the regulations of the general congregation. The inclusion in the regulations of the provincial congregation of the possibility that there may be a person who translates, designated by the provincial superior. The inclusion in the regulations of the general congregation of the points that are better detailed in the regulations of the provincial congregation. The inclusion in both regulations of some practical aspects related to the utilization of electronic means and digital supports. Correspondence. 5. That she reviews the criteria and modes of correspondence listed in Numbers 156 to 160 of the application of the Constitutions in order to adapt them to the current reality, keeping in mind the utilization of digital means and the demands of our mission. Third part, Document of Congregation General 21. Towards a symphony of universal fraternity, there is a symphony being played throughout all of history. Do you hear it? Listen carefully. You will hear it coming from a beating heart. We continue to sense this heartbeat, a heartbeat of the pierced heart of the risen Christ in which we hear his yearnings and desires for fullness of life for the world. As handmaids and together with those who share our charism, we continue to come forth from this heart, listening in the breaches to the cries of the world. We recognize the lines along which God wants us to boldly incorporate selves in this symphony. 1. Education in service of the gospel as a driving force for social transformation. 2. Being actively near to the discarded and excluded, generating processes of hope with them. 3. The conversion of our criteria and our lifestyle in order to continue committing selves to a social and solidarity economy and to the care of our common home. 4. Reparative dialogue, a movement of the spirit in harmony with our charism, which demands self-emptying and humility, making room for the other who transforms us and with whom we build a we. 5. And a line that remains open, yet to be named. Our dialogues and spaces of encounter will further define the content of this line surely. We are already hearing that this symphony is in the key of active hope, a hope that is patient and resilient, daring and martyrial, generating processes of conversion. The chord of the culture of care, a way of being in the world, is the texture of this symphony. In order for the melody to reach beyond the places where we could go alone, and because we see in this a way of the spirit, we opt for networking. Don't we hear how synodality is gradually being played more strongly? The need for reconciliation and accompaniment of families urges us to welcome them in their diversity and to strengthen our commitment to them. Our mission has much broader implications in relation to citizenship and its political consequences. We detect a spiritual conversation between the instruments, which helps us to share in faith our experiences, failures, hopes, and restlessness with those around us. It produces a beautiful harmony, personal and communal discernment. For there to be movement in the music, the musicians must take a breath, a breath of humility and openness, recognizing one's own vulnerabilities, a breath of collaboration instead of competition, a breath of freedom. It is noticeable, isn't it, that this symphony is played in the time of Amos, the time of encounter, with and in a pilgrim church. The music that flows from the heart of the risen Jesus leads to continuous conversion and to the transformation of society towards the culture of encounter. The symphony is unfinished, 
but the dynamics of the music leads us to create and to live a we that is enriched by interculturality, being fellow travelers sharing the same flesh. Together, we continue listening, dreaming, and composing this symphony that comes forth from his heart. Do you hear it?